Her single is F-150 exploding on the scene. If you've heard it, you've definitely sung it. Uh, her EP is called I'm Not Always Hilarious, but I'm guessing she's often hilarious. Uh, <laughs> iHeartRadio future star and Warner recording artist, Robin Adelini. Hi. Hello, Jeff. How are you today? I am fantastic, as good as I could be under lockdown. How about you? I'm doing pretty good myself, too, yeah. Lockdown is lockdown, but you take it and you take it. You know, the, we've seen some uh, artists who are really, uh, during this time of, of all of us being forced to be quiet and forced to uh, shelter, have really gotten down to work. Has that happened for you? Yeah, definitely. Um, I've been doing music for a while, but I was also working in the service industry to pay for music. Uh, so I used to be doing like 30 to four hour weeks and then coming home and doing gigs and writing. So when lockdown hit, I definitely had my little breakdown. Like I think a lot of people did. And I was like, there goes everything. And blah, blah, blah. Um, but my managers kind of, come on, Robin, you could do this. And, and they're like, you can have your, your week. But after that, like get, get to writing. That's what you do. That's what makes you happy. So I turned to writing. Um, and this was quarantine hit after the EP came out. So I was like so ready to show the world my EP and then I felt like I couldn't, but then I just right. turned to social medias because that's what everyone was doing. And one thing led to another. It's so good because um, I think uh, people don't know, overnight successes rarely are, and your overnight success is many overnights, many, many overnights, but here we are. TikTok is the reason that uh, it is, the venue anyway, the avenue that you took Absolutely. and suddenly everything exploded there. Um, what was it like having that kind of response? It was definitely wild. F-150 had been out for a while since February and it had like the best response from my fans that any of my songs has ever gotten before. And, and it was doing amazing. Um, and I had no marketing budget, so I was in it for the long haul. I was like, I gotta keep telling stories. So when TikTok came around, the cool thing is like everybody made it their story and they made it on their videos. That's kind of where the trend started. And everyone kept saying what their F-150 was because not everybody's ex drives an F-150. Um, and then that's <laughs> kind of where it catapulted. And then I just saw my streams explode on Spotify and Apple. And I was just like, you, I didn't know how to react. I'm a person who doesn't react. I, I'm very inward. So when I'm really happy, I'll just be silent. And my managers are like, what's wrong? And I'm like, I feel like it's exploding right now. <laughs> I get very confused. Um, but it was Wait a second. So wait a second. I hand you $2 million just for fun and be like, hey, I'm going to give you $2 million. And you're like, I'm very happy. That's what I do. <laughs> I mean, money is like blah, blah, blah. But you hand me a record deal. And I'm just like, huh. <laughs> like, that's just how I explode. Some people like happy cry. And do things. I did happy cry when I got my first record deal, but it wasn't like a, oh my God, I'm so happy. It was like a. Yeah. So a lot's going on in here though, right? Like crazy fireworks. All the time. I'm a songwriter. All my brain is, is fireworks. And I think that's why I react so quietly is I'm, I'm so used to fireworks going off in my head and always talking to myself that like when I am quiet, I'm just like talking to myself. Yeah, I got you. I got you. All right. So, you know, um, there, there used to be a way, you, a way where you got discovered in a small honky tonk or a bar and, you know, an A&R person would be like, oh, she's got this thing. We're picking this up. But the script has been flipped a little bit here where artists are making their way out to directly to more people than they ever had access to before. And I was just wondering, because this whole thing happened for you on uh, TikTok and on other social media channels, I was just wondering if that puts an artist in a better position at the beginning of their career once they've already proven that there's big interest in them. I think, I think it does. I don't know how much I'm allowed to talk, but um, if you look at Mary Morris, for instance, she did My Church independently and that blew up. And then look at her now. Um, right. And who else did that? That happened to Carly Pierce. Every little thing blew up without a label. And then boom. Um, I think it just gives you more ground to stand on as an in, in well, like when you come from an independent artist with a lot of streams and data behind you, you can definitely say, I got something going and there's right. proof. There's proof. Yeah. Um, I mean, I always believed in myself in like a, you have to believe in yourself if you want this job, but 
uh, to have the proof behind me. It's like, I believe in me, but also all these people believe in me. So what you gonna do about it? Um, but yeah, the labels, the labels were very nice and everything. <laughs> that's good. I think that's very relatable where a lot of us are all, no matter what you're after, right? You believe in yourself and you are pumping yourself up all the time, like, you know, getting the courage to go after it over and over and over again. When you finally get that validation, that's an emotional moment. It's so emotional. Even like, halfway through quarantine when things started to open up again i was like oh i might just like go get another job as a waitress just to pay for the music bills again and my dad looked at me he's like no not this time he's like i'm sorry you just gotta do music and if you don't get it in a year i don't care but you live here for free we feed you just do the gosh darn thing um so i remember that in the back of my head he was just shocked he was like no <laughs> yeah let's talk about um F-150's video, right? How, that came out how long ago? Came out December 4th. Yeah, uh, just over, a, uh, you know, like it's been out depending. Like a month and a half now. Sure, yeah. And uh, did you have you checked the streams lately? Isn't that crazy? It's like over a million. Yeah, yeah, it's over a million crazy. streams. It's like, it's, ah, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, you just don't think it's going to happen until it happens. And like, you can dream, right? But dang. That's amazing. Yeah. Well, congratulations on that. Let's talk about making that video because it looks like you had a lot of fun. And I think that comes through on the screen. There were some people you know in that thing, right? Yeah. Um, because of COVID, we wanted to try to keep the limitations and like the circle small. So people who I already kind of saw um, in my bubble, they were in it. So people I was close to. And then, yeah, it was just a heck of a lot of fun. We did it at my manager's house. So it was like common, familiar ground for me. Um, and it was just, whew. I worked with a, a director called Ben Nectel, who I only dreamed of. And yeah, it was fun. We blew up a truck, which- I know you blew up a truck and with your squad. Yeah, and with my people. It was right. I mean, there was a lot of fire going on in that. So I was looking at that and I was thinking to myself, a lot of this stuff must have been one take. I mean, you don't have six trucks back here. Right? We don't. That was a one take. Um, okay. And I had to keep my cool. They did pop, I have to admit, they did pop or test before, which is where they pop to make sure it catches and then they immediately it goes down. So like I got used to the sound once uh, okay. and then and then we're like, all right, now we're filming. <laughs> and I was like, okay. And you can check out my reaction to that on my Instagram if, if you haven't yet. But That's I have so cool. heard that starts with F. <laughs> Uh-oh. Not that one. Um, <laughs> Uxbridge, Ontario, which is an interesting town because it's very close to a great big city called Toronto. And so I'm wondering what it's like, small town living, but that close to a big city. What's that actually like? I feel like I grew up in the country of Uxbridge, not the country of Uxbridge, but like the countryside. So yeah, I was yeah. never even in the town, but I think it was great because you get to live this life of nobody's around and small town living, but you're so close if you want to get to the music scene. But a fun thing about Uxbridge is the music scene in Uxbridge is huge. There's like open mics almost every night of the week. There's karaoke um, twice a week. It's just very musical. All my friends play music. And like when we hang out, it's not like we hang out in a garage. It's like we hang out in someone's living room and just jam and drink. So Uxbridge has a scene. It has a scene. It's like, like it used this. to have like festivals, like they'd have like the music and arts festival, springtime music festival. It, yeah, music or Uxbridge kind of raised me as a musician. So post pandemic, uh, it's on my list now, just down the road. I'm going, that's just it. Just down the road. Okay. I, can I hit you with the worst would you rather in all of history? I love games. Please. You're not going to like this would you rather though. Okay. Would okay. you rather lose your singing voice or your ability to write music? Sorry. <laughs> my face dropped. Did you see that? <laughs> yeah. I'd rather lose my singing voice than my ability to write music. I thought you would say that. But yeah. boy, that would be a heartbreaker anyway. Yeah, I'm like thinking about it right now. Because as a musician, the, or like how I always see music is it's the one thing somebody can't take away from me. No matter what, nobody can take my voice and nobody can take my songwriting capabilities. Right. So, if, right. But like you can always lose your voice. I'm always scared of like vocal damage or like wrecking my voice. And it's just like, 
makes me sad to think about. Wow, man. <laughs> No, no, I, I, no, don't actually think about it. Don't actually do it, Robin. Just would no, you rather. No. It's a game. It's a game. Okay, so do you take care of your voice? Like, Celine Dion is famous for her. Her regimen in the day really takes care of everything uh, in terms of, like, lozenges, drinks, teas, you know, is very quiet through the middle of her day or whatever. Is all of that happening for you, or you're like, Psh. I'm not like that. I mean, I might become like that just because now I have a record deal. Um, I never did singing lessons or anything, so now I'm I'm taking lessons because now I have like a really big reason to be really good. Um, and yeah, it's all about like preserving your voice and how to warm it up safely and everything. So I'm definitely trying to learn how to take care of her. And I drink water like a fish, so right. I don't know. But I'm not Celine Dion level, and I've never done the steamer thing before. <laughs> that's right the steamer thing so many Make artists do that and i think tour would bring it out of me so i definitely am trying to learn as much as i can there Just are certain top. things there are certain things that aren't obvious that are a you made it thing the, the steam thing might be one of those it things might be like, it. i've made it <laughs> <laughs> i did it i did it <laughs> we'll see we'll see i mean <laughs> i'll let you know if i ever get there so I know that you're, you're on this rise right now. You're on this awesome, it's basically like surfing. You're on a nice wave right now. I Heart Radio I love that gone. you said that. I, I love surfing. I suck at it. <laughs> and also one of my big things is I always say, I'm just going to ride the wave. I'm just, if there's yep. an impact zone, I'm going to be in the impact zone. But until then, I'm riding the wave. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're on the wave. But the funny thing about waves are you can create your own. And I'm just saying, like, I know that you're always riding. This is what I hear from your people. I have spoken to them. <laughs> I am always writing. That's very true. Um, I'm on radio tour right now, but I'm definitely sneaking in right to where I can because they tried to like dial it back for me. They're like, you're stressed. We don't want to put more on your plate. And I was like, please, please put writing on my plate. I don't care if it drives me nuts. But to me, it's just like the fun thing. So why would I want to? I don't know. It's like therapy. If I don't do it, you can tell I get grumpy. <laughs> Right, and that, I've heard that from so many songwriters, and they say, like, you, they're saying, you know, take care of yourself and, and rest and don't stress. They're like, if I don't have this outlet, the stress overwhelms me. Exactly, because in December, we tried to do that, too, because there was, like, the music video, and, and there was a lot going on, so they're like, let's just dial back rights, and I didn't write for, like, a whole week. I was miserable and not fun to work with, at least for the managers. Everybody else, I'm nice to. But I was like, guys, I just need to write. I'm sorry. I like, <laughs> this is clearly not working. I was like, I need therapy. Um, and all I right. Therapy. So in terms of the dream as we come out of this, we're all dreaming of coming out of this whole situation. What's the venue, the one that you're dying to play? If you haven't played it already, maybe you've already played. I haven't played it. Played it. I want to play Budweiser stage because yes. hometown and that's yeah. where I always went to country concerts was Budweiser stage. I was lawns every time cause I was broke as butt knuckles, <laughs> but heck yeah, I want to play Budweiser stage. Um, wouldn't that be just wild? It would be the coolest. And I, I think that you would have fireworks going off uh, during that entire performance. I, would. No I might even cry at that one. But there um, you go. But yeah, it's just like, so again, so close to Uxbridge, I bet so many people from Uxbridge would come. And um, yeah. I don't know, I just want to play for my people. Yeah, the cool thing about country in Canada is people will fly from all over the country to major venues like Budweiser Stage uh, and, and just make a trip of it, which I love. So I think that's in your future, Robin. And I'm very, very happy that you are the iHeartRadio future star and that things are on the move for you, even amid the craziness that's going on. I want to thank you so much for chatting with us today. Thank you for having me. And thank you for making me the iHeart Future radio star. You guys kicked off my Canadian country radio journey and I am so thankful. <laughs> <laughs>